Hi guys, in this video, we're going to check out 9 must-visit attractions in Qatar. There are plenty of things to do in Qatar, from desert off-roading to historic markets to islands that look like the Maldives. One thing that has thrust Qatar into the spotlight is the FIFA World Cup. Over 1.2 million football fans are expected to attend the tournament, eager to explore the peninsula between matches. If you are willing to slow down and take time to explore, there is so much to see in Qatar that you may not be able to see everything in one trip. Here, we show you some of the best places to visit in Qatar. But first, don't forget to like, subscribe, and press the bell icon. National Museum of Qatar the Epochal Museum was designed by French architect Jean Nouvel to look like a desert rose crystal. Like the State Mosque in Sauk, the museum was built on the site of a previous version, the first Qatar National Museum. Having replaced the previous building, which opened in 1975, the current building opened to the public on 28 March 2019. Among the museum's attractions is Sheikh Abdullah bin Jassim Al Thani's palace the center of Qatar identity. It also showcases Bedouin artifacts, jewelry, and weapons, as well as displays about tribal wars, textiles, and traditional dress. Visitors to Qatar State Museum are welcomed by its eye-catching design. Imam Abdul Wahab Mosque. Located in Doha's Lejbelet neighborhood, it's the largest mosque in Qatar, on the top of the country's state mosque, there are 93 small domes. Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed Al Thani built the original Grand Mosque on the grounds on which the mosque is located. The mosque can accommodate 30,000 worshippers. With its clean lines and simple design, it follows the traditional Islamic architecture. It was designed to keep prayer goers cool during the summer months with marble floors. Visitors and worshippers can also find shade in arches and corridors covered by small domes. Throughout the year, the mosque hosts cultural and educational events, as well as Quran memorizing classes. Katara Cultural Village Located halfway between West Bay and the Pearl, Katara Cultural Village is made up of simple sand-washed buildings that serve as an opera house, planetarium, library, an art gallery, and even an amphitheater, where many famous scholars and singers have performed. Another mosque covered in tiny gold tiles and two large pigeon towers can also be found near Katara Mashid, one of the most ornate mosques in the country. Since 2010, the venue has provided artists with a space to exchange ideas and showcase their cultures. It also has a 1.5 km sand beach, with pedalos and canoes available to rent, for those looking for more. As an olive cutter, the food choices are endless. Katara is home to a variety of street food outlets, including fried potatoes on sticks and plates of hot kosheri, an Egyptian staple with pasta, lentils, and spiced tomato sauce. A variety of sit-down restaurants serve Ottoman feasts and seafood platters. In fact, the most popular place at Chapedi and Karak is the drive through tea shop. Every night, people crowd outside to get their fix of sweet, strong Karak tea, usually accompanied by a thin, buttery chapati. Salk Waqif. The beautifully crafted cobbled walkways of Salk Waqif are one of Doha's oldest shopping areas. Bedouins and locals have traded goods here for centuries, and merchants are known to sail in and exchange goods at the old standing Salk in the city. Shopping in the Salk gives shoppers a taste of Qatari tradition. In the 1990s, Qatar's oil and gas revenues led to the Salk's decline. A fire in 2003 allegedly destroyed what was left, paving the way for much-needed renovations. Selks are traditionally constructed with mud walls and timber beams, 
and buildings built after the 1950s have been knocked down and rebuilt with traditional Qatari architecture. Bismillah Hotel, now a five-star boutique hotel, is one of the few original buildings left in the Sauk and was one of the first hotels there. There are many cafes, restaurants, and shisha lounges in the bazaar, where shoppers and bargain hunters can enjoy local food. Banana Island At first glance, Banana Island may look like the Maldives, with its water bungalows surrounded by pristine waters. The waterfront accommodations offers a popular mini-break staycation destination for Kateras and visitors. The man-made island offers luxury accommodations for a getaway from the city. Located near the Museum of Islamic Art, the man-made resort is accessible by catamaran from the Al Shuk Terminal on Doha's Cornich. The 13-hectare island offers fine dining, a luxury spa, and all the comforts of a high-end resort. Additionally, you can spend a day kayaking or snorkeling on the island. The Pearl It's an artificial island development of residential towers and townhouses built on land reclaimed from the sea, which from above resembles a string of pearls. Its name comes from pearl fishing, which once flourished in Qatar. It opened in 2006 in Doha's West Bay area and quickly became home to expats working in the oil and gas, banking, and media industries. Qatar has recently become one of the few places in the country where foreigners can buy property, although prices start at $357,000 for a one-bedroom apartment. With covered walkways linking the different precincts, it's pedestrian-friendly. The Pearl's main area, Porto Arabia, has a 2.5 kilometers walkway where expats and locals alike promenade. Located at the base of the towers, there are designer shops and expensive restaurants that overlook a marina filled with yachts. There is a brightly painted residential area, Canat Courtier, within the Pearl, that has been inspired by Venice. Throughout the Pearl's Canat Quarter, there are Venetian influences. The Canat Courtier even includes a replica of the Rialto Bridge, and underneath it run waterways. Museum of Islamic Art Located at the eastern end of the Corniche is the Majestic Museum of Islamic Art. In the daytime, this magnificent structure is colored by light and shading depending on the sun's position. At night, colorful uplights further enhance its beauty. In order to blend in with its surrounding desert environment, the museum is covered in limestone. It was designed by the late Chinese-American architect Ayam Pei, who also designed the Pyramid at the Louvre. There are five stories of rooms devoted to art from around Islamic countries. The museum exhibits a wide range of Islamic art, including Arabic calligraphy, early Islamic books, a copy of the Quran from the 17th century, miniatures, textiles, jewelry, and woodwork. The museum has held many popular exhibitions, including one on Hajj in 2013, titled The Journey Through Art, in collaboration with the British Museum. A 19th-century blue Quran have been acquired by the recently reopened museum after it was closed for renovations for 18 months. The Corniche The seven-kilometer stretch of Doha's promenade may seem like a long stretch of pavement, but it's the perfect place for getting in a long walk or spending time with loved ones. Kataris and visitors alike enjoy the morning stroll too. Located between the Museum of Islamic Art and the city's business district, the Corniche provides visitors with a unique perspective on the city's skyline. This is a popular spot for people to walk while taking in the city's skyline. This stretch is dominated by the Al Morjan restaurant, 
serving expensive Lebanese cuisine and hosting a giant statue of Ori the Oryx, the mascot of Qatar's Asian Games 2006. Among the buildings along the walk are the Amiri Diwan, Qatar's government headquarters, as well as the Sheraton Hotel, which was built in 1982 and became the first building along the waterfront. In addition to shaded parks and dancing fountains, the hotel offers respite for Doha families during the summer. The Inland Sea It's an hour's drive from Doha in the southeast, close to the border with Saudi Arabia, and this 15 kilometers long tidal bay lies within Qatar's desert land, known as Khor al Adade or the Inland Sea. As there are no roads leading to the picturesque waterside, you need a four-wheel drive vehicle to reach it. A variety of activities have been set up within this oasis in the past two decades, such as dune bashing and sandboarding, among others. You can also ride a camel to learn how people used to cross these lands less than a century ago. Archaeologists have discovered signs of early farming and fishing settlements while prehistoric sites have been discovered on the small islands. As a result of its remarkable landscape and undeveloped natural beauty, it was added to UNESCO's World Heritage Convention tentative list in 2008. The ecosystem of the island is unique, home to turtles, gazelles, oryxes, dolphins, and an endangered species of dugong. In addition to the clear skies, it is also an excellent place for stargazing. It is best to look up shortly after midnight to capture the Milky Way's splendor. This area has been used as a weekend getaway for generations of Kateri families.